Hello there, and welcome to another Wellness Wednesday. As you know, we go live at five every Wellness Wednesday with a new video about some health tips or things that we want you to understand or educate yourself about, about how your body works, how it heals, and how you can get better faster without the need for medication or surgery. So this week we are talking about how to stop acting your age. Now we all know that aging can be a tenuous process. For some of us, we can age gracefully and be able to enjoy the things we love. And for those of us that maybe haven't been taking care of ourselves the best, we may have some issues that come up as we age. Um, so we're going to take kind of a lighthearted approach to aging gracefully. And we're also going to talk about some tips on what you can do starting today to uh, make sure that you keep your muscle mass and your bone density as you age. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. And just to let you know, if you are new to our channel, thank you so much uh, for finding us. But also make sure that you hit that subscribe button and then also ring that little bell so it'll alert you when we have new videos, which mostly come every Wellness Wednesday, but every once in a while we have a gem that we drop in there at other times. So make sure you subscribe, hit that bell to be notified for new videos. That way you can stay current with what's going on in our office and uh, some new education topics for you personally. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that way you know what's going on here. And let's see. There we go. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. So like I said, today is all about how to stop acting your age. As we know, um, aging, again, can be a interesting process for those of us. So I'm Dr. Andrea Shinowski. I am a chiropractor and wellness expert here in Peoria, Illinois. Um, if you want some more information about our office or even to request an appointment, or find out more about how we can help you, whether you are here in town or somewhere else in the United States, we are more than happy to help you do uh, consultations via phone, uh, via video chat, or again, we can even do those here in the office. Um, so our website is freedompeoria.org. You can also give us a call at 309-689-6200. So for today, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I want to start with some fun um, kind of quotes and things that I've always enjoyed. Uh, one of those is age is simply the number of years the world has been enjoying you. So it doesn't matter if you are if you are under 20, if you are under 40, if you are over 50, if you are over 65, or if you are just tallying off those years, however old you are, really that age is just the number of years that the world's been enjoying you. You can actually make sure that uh, as you age and age gracefully, that you are enjoying every single year of that. Um, but if you haven't been taking care of yourself, some of those years may be a little rough on you. So we're going to talk a little bit more about how to manage some of those conditions. We have four secrets we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, the second quote that I really love is wrinkles should merely indicate where smiles have been. Now, when it comes down to it, we have only so many years on this earth and uh, we have only so many years and only so many smiles we can share with the people that we love and the people that we're close to. So you want to make sure that you were enjoying those years and able to actually get the most out of your body and the most out of your smiles too. So it's always the smiles and the miles, as I like to say. Um, but like I said, tonight, we're going to talk a little bit more about aging gracefully. So we're going to talk a little bit about life expectancy, because I think that's really important. Over the years, life expectancy has increased. However, we are now seeing um, with some of our advancements in medical care, with some of our advancements in being able to, um, number one, eat healthier, but also making sure we understand the body and how it works and how it heals, our life expectancy has increased over the years, which is amazing. You're able to really uh, live life to the fullest and enjoy those years as you go through. However, what's really interesting to me is that quality of life has actually not improved. That means that we are living longer lives, but not necessarily happier and full of life. Um, we've actually found that in many cases, people that are living longer lives are not necessarily able to actively enjoy those. They're not able to get out and hike and do the things that they love. They may be actually sick and stuck in hospital or stuck at home dealing with health issues. So I want to talk a little bit more tonight about how to, number one, stop acting your age, but also aging gracefully and how you can protect your body, protect your joints so that you can actually enjoy and really have the fullest and the most out of those years. So uh, tonight, like I said, we are going to talk about stop acting your age. So the number one rule to stop acting your age is get rid of your pain. If you can get rid of that pain, you can reduce stress on your body. You can actually help make sure that your body is using energy to not heal, but actually enjoy those years. Number two, we're going to talk about how to have more energy so you can get through your day and also have extra energy to do the things that you love. 
we're going to talk about pumping that iron. So the type of exercise that can help make sure you maintain your muscle mass and also your bone density. And we're also going to talk about eating habits that can help you fight disease rather than just being reactive and rather than just eating to fuel our bodies. So we're going to talk a little bit more about those four things tonight. So those are our four steps. So number one, getting rid of pain. Back pain is the second most common reason that people see their doctor. And what's really interesting to me is a lot of times when you go to your medical doctor, when you go to prompt care, when you go to the ER for back pain, their primary focus is making sure it's not a severe trauma. So not a fracture, not a tumor, not something that needs immediate surgery. If it's not, a lot of times their second focus is just reducing pain, not getting rid of it, not finding out what caused it and helping to make sure that doesn't come back, but just reducing that pain, typically with over-the-counter medication, so pain relievers and muscle relaxers. Now, what's really interesting is when it comes to chronic pain, so people that have disability today due to chronic pain, these are the four reasons and the percentages associated with those as to what type of condition necessitates that chronic pain disability. So 27% of the people that have disability today um, are dealing with some form of back pain. So it's really interesting to know that back pain is a huge factor, not only for seeing your doctor, but also for permanent disabilities just because of that chronic pain. Now, when it comes to what we're feeling and our symptoms, a lot of times those symptoms are literally the tip of the iceberg, pardon the pun here. Um, but when it comes down to it, when we look at kind of what we're feeling above the surface or the tip of the iceberg, you're feeling a small amount of that pain. The issue is pain is only a very small portion of what happens when you have an injury. So underneath the surface, you may have joint damage. You may have cartilage that's worn down. You may have ligaments or even uh, meniscus that has been injured in a joint. And all of those things help to keep stability. So when we have an injury, the longer that injury happens, we start to get more instability, more wear and tear, we get more issues with not having full function that eventually it can result in pain that is constant or coming very frequently and very, very, very sharp and very hard to ignore. A lot of times we may have more subtle symptoms that happen for years that we tend to put on the back burner or ignore before that problem even comes about. So for example, I see a lot of patients with arthritis in my office and they may have been dealing with pain for 10, 15 years, it came and went, it only happened for a couple of days, it would go away. Those are your body's way of telling you there's a problem. So your body will literally send you signals. Sometimes those are pain signals, sometimes it's muscle tension, sometimes organ dysfunction can also be another symptom, even hormone imbalance or allergies, sinus problems. Those are all symptoms your body has to tell you something is not working right, something is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit more about uh, that pain that we're talking about. So when it comes to many joint pain issues, um, a lot of that's caused by a mechanical problem. That means that the joint is not aligned properly. It's not moving properly. We can have the disc or that cartilage between the bones can be worn down or thinned. Um, a lot of people that have degenerative disc disease, that means that cartilage has actually thinned out between the bones. And let me grab a model real quick. I think this is really important. So you have normal bones, bone stacked on top, worn up that cartilage disc. And in the back, we have that hole where the nerve comes through. If we start to have wear and tear and that cartilage thins out, eventually what can happen is those joints start to actually break down and we get arthritis formation. So you can see those sharp pointy bone spurs right here around the bone. And those can actually press on the delicate paper of the nerves, but you can also get arthritis in the back of your spine where those bones come together. And it can actually cause less space for those nerves which can cause not only that joint misalignment, but it causes the cartilage to wear down. It causes nerve damage and your body will react. Your body's gonna try to protect itself. So a lot of times what we'll see is that muscles will spasm up to try to protect that joint and stop it from moving so you can't cause further damage. So a lot of times when patients are coming in saying they've had muscle spasms for years or they're currently on a muscle relaxer because of pain, your body's fine trying to send you a signal. And those medications that are stopping the muscle spasms really are covering up the problem. They're not addressing it. Um, the other thing that can happen is when we have those joints out of position and not moving for a while, we can start to see the ligaments and tendons associated with that joint start to break down. They can become inflamed. So tendonitis, um, any type of bursitis, a lot of times is because of joint issues, mechanical problems where the joints are not physically moving how they're supposed to be. Now, here's the interesting thing. Like I mentioned, a lot of times people will take pain medications or muscle relaxers to help with those things. 
The problem is medication is a chemical, right? So chemical things do not fix mechanical issues. So if we have a joint that is out of position and we add a chemical, that's gonna affect how our body actually experiences that pain, but it doesn't necessarily fix the pain. It reduces inflammation, it relaxes muscle spasm, so it reduces symptoms, not the actual cause of that problem. And that's what we typically do in our office is we find the mechanical problem, we find the actual cause of it, and we try to work on correcting that so that the problem not only goes away, it doesn't keep coming back. And we train and educate you how to make sure you keep those joints moving and keep them healthy and keep them strong for the rest of your life. So you can have more quality in those years, no matter how many you have on this earth. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about some of these things. So joint alignment. Um, so if you see on the left, which I showed you a model of this one already, we have bones stacked on top of one another with that cartilage disc and a hole, which is where your nerve goes through. If we have a bone that misaligns, subluxates, moves out of position, like you see on the right, that subluxation, that bone moves out of position and it'll actually press on your nerves. It'll cause extra wear and tear that will break down that cartilage disc in between the bones and your body will actually form not only muscle spasms to try to protect that area, but eventually over time with years and wear and tear, we can also see arthritis form, not because we're old, because the joints aren't moving properly. So when the tires on your car are out of alignment, they wear down faster. Same thing happens in your spine. We just have to make sure we understand that it's correctable. We can actually put the joints back in place and your body can actually regrow and heal the nerve damage. We can regrow cartilage and your body can even resorb those bone spurs. So a lot of times, arthritis can be reversible as long as it's not too far gone where we can't restore normal function. So when we look at uh, another thing that we see, a chronic forward head posture. So posture issues, a lot of times can put extra pressure on the joint. So we are supposed to have good posture with the middle of our ear lined up over our shoulder. We're supposed to have our head directly over our hip. So if we have chronic forward head posture where our head is pushed forward, our shoulders are rolled forward, sit at a desk all day. This is typically something that we see uh, with people that are seated and sitting at a desk all day is as our head moves forward, those muscles will actually stretch out. And what happens is the muscles aren't doing the proper work and holding the weight of your head. But what tends to happen is every inch your head moves forward has an additional 10 pounds of pressure on the top of your head, which means that 10 pounds of pressure is compressing down in your joints. Your joints are going to start getting pushed into each other, wearing down faster. So every single time we look at people that have posture issues, we are seeing more and more degeneration, more and more pressure on their neck that can lead to arthritis, that can lead to actual bone density issues because the joints aren't being loaded properly. But in some cases, it can actually cause pretty severe arthritis where the bones can almost compress into each other. And we can actually have arthritis directly pressure, pressurizing and putting pressure on our disc on our nerves, and that can cause a lot of pain and actually cause nerve damage too. So if you're having symptoms of like, say for example, carpal tunnel, thoracic, thoracic outlet syndrome, weakness, or even shooting pains down in the arm or the hands, a lot of times that can be stemming from the neck because those nerves at the base of your neck actually go all the way down to your fingertips. So we can have a lot of different symptoms when we have pressure in that area. Another thing that happens is when you have those joints, like I mentioned, out of place for a while, over time, we can start getting some effects where those joints start to break down. So arthritis is when we actually have extra bone development that begins to happen and the joint starts to break down. Your body will put extra um, calcifications in that area to help stabilize and put basically be able to support that extra weight and wear and tear on the joint. And eventually we can get what's called stenosis. So the holes where the nerves come through and also the hole where the spinal cord comes down the spine, we can start forming arthritis around that rim and that's what's called stenosis. So the holes themselves where the nerves go through and the spinal cord goes through have arthritis around them. So that hole gets smaller. So there's less room for your spinal cord, less room for your nerves. And that can cause some pretty significant pain and pretty significant health issues too. Another thing that happens is when those joints are not having the proper pressure on them and you're not getting the proper nutrition to that area, your joints can actually start breaking down. Uh, usually when we start to have some bone thinning, it's called osteopenia, so it's not quite as thick as it should be. Osteoporosis is when we actually have lost a lot of that bone density, and, and when we have osteoporosis, it's very easy for those bones themselves to actually compress and form a compression fracture. Um, I've seen a lot of patients that had years of bad posture, years of not moving those joints properly, the joints broke down, and eventually 
those bones actually had a compression fracture. They literally just compressed and literally collapsed under the weight of the body. Um, another thing that happens is we have degenerative joint disease. So that's when the joints themselves, so the joints where the spine comes together. So in this picture here, these joints come together with the vertebral disc here. So this is when we have that degenerative disc disease is when that disc starts to break down. Degenerative joint disease is when we actually have arthritis forming around the joints themselves. We can also have arthritis forming back here. And eventually, as those bones enlarge with degeneration and we get more inflammation around there, we can actually get soft tissue injury. So we can see not only nerve pressure, we can see muscle uh, spasms, we can do supersitis. A lot of those different conditions are associated with that. Another thing to keep in mind is those nerves coming out of your spine control every single cell in your body. So those nerves not only can cause pain and they also control our muscle function, but they do go to our organ systems. So what's really interesting to me is we can have a lot of different symptoms happen when we have nerve pressure. So we can have headaches in this upper neck area when we have some of these pressures of the nerves going to our facial organs, but also the blood flow up into our brain. So when we have altered uh, nerve function or altered blood flow, that can cause headaches. It can cause eye sensitivity. It can cause spatial pain. Um, like I mentioned already, when you have nerve pressure, you can get pain and numbness with that because the nerves aren't working properly. We can see neuropathy where we have nerve damage that we're starting to get the nerve sensations altered. We can also see digestive issues. So here in this mid-back area here around T6, those nerves go directly to your stomach. So if you're having heartburn, if you're having indigestion, if you're having GERD, a lot of times the nerves going to the stomach aren't working properly. And if we can restore that nerve function, your body can begin the healing process. Uh, for patients that have intestinal issues, um, IBS, diarrhea, constipation, uh, bloating, and things like that, the nerves going to your intestines may not be signaling properly, moving your food and moving things through your body properly. It can also cause um, the muscles in the smooth muscles of these intestines not to work properly. So a lot of times when patients have IBS or Crohn's disease that are coming into my office and we start adjusting and we're getting nerve function improved, sometimes they'll notice those symptoms go away or their flare-ups go down much less and they're able to keep those under control more. Another thing that's really interesting is there's been a lot of studies on chiropractic and altered blood pressure. So the blood pressure centers are actually up in your brainstem area here. If we have pressure on this area of the brainstem, we can actually see blood pressure levels will rise. Also, when you're under chronic pain, that's going to affect your hormone balance. And that hormone balance can also cause your blood pressure to be unbalanced. So sometimes that's higher blood pressure than normal or even lower blood pressure than normal if we've got a lot of uh, chronic inflammation or chronic issues with our health going on in our body. Another thing we can see is hormone imbalance. So I mentioned already those nerves go to your organ systems. Um, sex organs are responsible for producing your hormones. And after menopause, your adrenal gland actually is responsible for producing those hormones. So if we have nerve issues going to our organ systems, we can see hormone function affected from that. And also, like I mentioned, chronic pain and chronic health issues can also cause inflammation where that adrenal gland doesn't work properly. Another thing to think about is insomnia. If your body is not functioning right, if your hormone balance is off, that can cause issues with how your body makes and utilizes those hormones when you're trying to sleep, and that can cause issues with insomnia. Um, another thing I see is incontinence. Uh, again, we may not always think about this, but those nerves in our spine not only control the organ function that help us to void properly, but also helping to keep those muscles tight so that we don't have any inadvertent leaking, uh, whether that is when you're sneezing, whether that is just throughout the day. A lot of times issues with being able to hold in uh, urine or even sometimes um, our feces can actually have to do with the muscles that control the sphincters. And those are actually controlled by the nerves in our lower back. So if you have lower back issues, if you have arthritis, sometimes that can affect these things in the long run. So number two, so step two to stop acting your age is having more energy. Now I mentioned hormones already, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. But I always like to kind of think about this. So when it comes to kids that are full of energy, running around, just acting crazy, do you remember when you had that limitless energy? Well, let me tell you, I always make the joke in my office, we have kids in our office, um, that I would love to bottle that and just be able to tuck it away for a different day. Uh, but when it comes down to it, kids' bodies are number one, healing much more effectively, but they don't typically have the stressors and things that we're dealing with on a daily basis. Um, like I mentioned already, that adrenal gland, which I think that really is kind of a big thing that a lot of people don't pay attention to. Um, but when it comes to any type of 
chronic health issues that can start wearing and tearing on your body and how it functions. About 50% of adults who seek medical treatments actually complain of feeling tired all the time. So fatigue is a symptom of your body not functioning right, not able to heal and bounce back from injuries. And over time, those injuries can add up until we have issues, not only with fatigue, but sometimes even insomnia because we can't sleep properly. So we'll talk a little bit more about those hormones because I think that those are your body's signs and uh, pardon the pun, but we have plenty of signs here. Your body's telling me, hey, something's not working right. Hormones are off, hormones are off. Alert, alert, something's not working right. So when it comes down to it, adrenal fatigue is real. Now, if you look it up in the research, it's actually not called adrenal fatigue. It's called HPA axis disorder. It's hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal glands all work together to make sure your body is functioning properly. Now, when we have one part of that balance off or when we have health issues or stress or things like that that tend to cause problems, we can start to see damage where eventually we will see symptoms arise. So I always mention when it comes to the adrenal gland that she is the queen. So when we look at the queen or the king, if you're a male, um, that adrenal gland actually is our fight or flight response. That has to work and everybody bows down and everybody will get out of her way so that she can do or he can do his job. So your adrenal gland produces a hormone called cortisol that controls most functions in your body. But the other thing that happens is that cortisol should be nice and high in the morning and should taper off throughout the day. If you've had lab testing done where they looked at cortisol level first thing in the morning, that's a really big range. Literally the range for cortisol in the morning is really, really, really large. So if you're anywhere in there, your doctor may tell you your cortisol level is normal. The problem is cortisol changes throughout the day. So it's much better to find out if we look throughout the day as to what is going on with cortisol throughout the day. Because if we have a specific time of day that our body is struggling, then we know number one, what we need to do is focus on that time of day, but we can also add in some dietary changes, some lifestyle changes, some supplements to help support your body, getting back to normal and healing itself. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to that adrenal gland, that gland, like I said, is the queen. So other systems will bow down to it. So what can happen is, when the adrenal gland is needing more resources, it will actually tell thyroid gland, hey, shut down, calm down. We're going to focus on using all these resources so you don't need to work. So a lot of times when we have thyroid conditions, we may actually have the adrenal gland telling the thyroid not to work properly. So if you have thyroid issues, I usually recommend that you get a full thyroid panel done. So that means not just TSH, not just free T4, but also looking at uh, free T3, looking at reverse T3, looking at your antibodies to make sure you don't have an autoimmune condition going on. Because in many cases, I see that thyroid function can actually be depressed or not working properly due to an adrenal issue that's being missed. The other thing to keep in mind is those hormones that your adrenal gland produces actually can reduce and take away from your mood hormones. So if you're having issues with depression and anxiety, if you're having issues with libido changes, if you're having issues where you are very emotional or crying, or you're noticing that you are just having a lot of mood swings, those are all symptoms where your body is literally losing resources to the adrenal gland, and we can start to see depression, anxiety, we can see where you're being overwhelmed or irritable with your family and friends, and not really feeling like yourself. Another thing that can be affected is metabolism. So if you're noticing that you're eating the same things, you're exercising the same way, you're not sitting around, all of a sudden you're gaining weight for no reason, or it's impossible to lose it, your body's metabolism may actually be lowered because your body is trying to deal with healing and trying to deal with the stress of your everyday life and inflammation. We can also see digestion being shut down. So in some cases, uh, patients that are having issues where they're not feeling hungry, um, where they're eating and they're getting like stomach pain or bloating and things like that, where they're saying, well, you know, I just, I feel like I shouldn't eat as much because it just causes issues for me. Those are all symptoms that your body is not working properly. Another thing we can see affected is sleep. I mentioned insomnia already, but when we have chronic health issues in our body, your body will actually steal away from the resources that actually eventually turn into your sleep hormones. And when your cortisol level is high, you cannot sleep. So if you're having issues with your cortisol level being off, that can interfere with your sleep at night. Another thing is energy. So if you're noticing that you are like falling asleep at your desk after lunch, or if you're noticing that after a meal, you feel like you need to take a nap, your body may be struggling with balancing blood sugar. And uh, typically blood sugar is also a result of hormones that uh, can be affected by cortisol. When cortisol is high, typically your body will raise insulin to keep your blood sugar high, which means if you're having blood sugar imbalance issues, 
you may have an adrenal issue that's not being addressed. And another thing that's affected is your immune system. So when your body is under chronic inflammation, chronic stress, and that adrenal gland is working overtime, it will actually shut down healing processes. So if we're noticing that we're getting sick more often, if we're noticing that when we do get sick, it takes us longer for us to bounce back, that may be a symptom where your body is actually shutting down your immune system and that's affecting how your body's healing. Another thing to keep in mind, we talked a little bit more earlier about the fact that we want to make sure that we keep our bone density and our muscle mass as we age. Your bone density is what actually helps support the structure of your body and your muscles are what keeps everything moving properly. They make sure that we're putting pressure on the bones because your bones, if they don't have pressure on them and maybe don't have the proper amount of pressure, your body will say, you know what? We don't really need that extra calcification there. It's gonna remove that calcification, which can eventually lead to osteopenia and osteoporosis if you're not loading your bones properly. So number one, we wanna make sure we have good posture, but we also wanna make sure that we are trying to maintain our muscle mass so that your body can keep loading your bones and we can keep our bone density as we age. Uh, when it comes to exercise, a lot of people focus on cardiovascular exercise. So walking, jogging, um, going on the elliptical and things like that. But really when it comes down to a cardiovascular exercise, yes, it's great for your heart. However, it doesn't do much for your bone density unless you have amazing posture and you have really good muscle mass that's helping to make sure that you are loading those bones correctly and evenly so you're not wearing down one area more than another. The other thing to keep in mind is when it comes to cardiovascular exercise, you do have to work a little bit harder to burn calories. So if you're trying to lose weight, cardiovascular exercise can be a little frustrating. Um, in one mile, you only burn about 100 calories. So you may have to run quite a few miles for a Snickers bar. So that means it's really important to understand that you want to do a different types of exercises and a variety so that you are challenging your body, challenging your bones, and challenging your muscles. So really when it comes down to it, when it comes to exercise programs, you do want to keep your workout session short. You don't want to be in the gym for hours tiring yourself out. I usually recommend about 20 to 40 minutes is kind of effective. Um, and typically, again, you want to make sure that you are keeping those exciting. You want to try new things. You want to alternate body regions. So you don't want to always do the same exercise every single day. Try, you know, change it up, go to a class, try something new. And you also want to make sure that you're doing different body regions. So you're not just working out your arms, but you're working out your core, your lower body. You want to mix it up a little bit. Another thing that can help is keeping it challenging. So you want to make sure that you have attainable goals. So if you're setting goals for yourself when it comes to just plain exercise or weight loss or whatever it is you're trying to achieve, you want to have goals that are achievable and attainable. And you want to make sure you're tracking your progress. And if you need help with that, that's something that we do in our office. We can actually sit down with you, uh, come up with a plan and kind of figure out what's going to be the best thing for you. Another thing that can be helpful is having a partner. So having a partner, that may be somebody that you work out with, that may be going to a class and getting to know some people so that you guys keep each other accountable. Or that may be simply having somebody that's gonna help uh, keep you on track. We have our Freedom Healthy Weight program here in our office, where we basically have a 12 week program where every single week we sit down and meet, talking a little bit more about how you were exercising, how you have been eating, if you're making your goals. Um, and we come up with a plan to actually help you set goals for how to build muscle, rather than just lose weight, which a lot of times we tend to lose muscle mass with, um, but making sure you're doing it in a healthy way that is a lifestyle change so that you can maintain that the rest of your life. Number four, eating to fight disease. So this is our last step for today. Uh, we wanna make sure we understand that what we are eating has a huge impact on whether our body can fight disease and heal itself, or if we are actually uh, causing disease in our body. So a lot of times when it comes to eating habits, people look at calories. Now, Calorie counting can be very confusing because here's the thing. Some calories, like carbohydrates, for example, they only count for four calories. However, a lot of carbohydrates are highly processed, um, but it's really important to realize that carbohydrates feed your brain. So if you're cutting down on carbs and you're not getting the right type of carbs, which is going to be fruits and vegetables, to actually sustain your brain and sustain your muscles so that they can actually work out properly, that can cause issues. Um, protein also counts for for calories, however, it is typically what your body uses to make your hormones and your enzymes and rebuild your body. So if you're not getting enough protein, your body's not gonna be able to build muscle, which will increase your metabolism in the long run. Another thing to think about is everybody avoids fats. The problem is your whole entire brain is made of fat. Every single nerve in your body is made of fat. Every single sex hormone in your body is made of fat. So if you're not getting enough fat in your diet, especially the healthy fats, your body may start to have nerve issues. So if you have neuropathy, um, if you have 
cholesterol issues, if you have any type of issues with nerve pain and you're not getting enough fat, or if you're on medications like statins that tend to stop your body's normal production and processing of fats, that can cause long-term issues. So the other thing that's really interesting is fats actually keep you full. So if you're not getting enough fat and you're hungry and overeating because you're not getting enough fat, that can really cause havoc because you're going to be eating more calories that aren't necessarily what your body needs to heal. So keep in mind, all calories are not created equal. Processed foods tend to not only cause hormone imbalance, but they cause stress on your liver and your body has to break them down. So we want to make sure as much as possible, you're focused on eating proteins. You want to aim for about half a gram per pound of body weight. So if you're hundred pounds, 50 grams, we also want to make sure we're getting plenty of healthy fats and plenty of fruits and vegetables. So those processed foods, not necessarily the best thing that we should be focusing on. So like I mentioned, every time you eat or drink, you are either feeding disease or fighting it. So make sure you're eating the right things and making the right choices. So to recap for today, how to stop acting your age. Step number one, get rid of that pain, find the root cause and make sure we're addressing that, not just taking medications that are chemical solutions that don't fix mechanical issues. Step two, have more energy. So making sure that you are making sure you're addressing those hormones, making sure that you are uh, really finding out that you are getting the right things in your body. And if you're not having great energy, if you're noticing you're starting to have fatigue or other issues throughout the day, we may need to look a little bit deeper at those hormones to figure out what's going on. You want to make sure you are working out the right way. So making sure that you are keeping good posture and making sure you are loading your bones and keeping those muscle mass for long term so you can prevent joint degeneration and osteoporosis. And number four, make sure you're eating the right things. So again, plenty of proteins, good healthy fats, and lots of fruits and vegetables. So for those of you that are uh, wanting more information or feel like you need help with any of these steps, um, I do have some fun things we're going to go over first. But uh, I do want to encourage you, if you feel like you need help, please give my office a call. Again, that number is 309-689-6200, or you can go on our website, freedompeoria.org. So before we end tonight, we're going to get some laughs in. So is it just me, or does it seem like cats always seem to know where the pain is? It always cracks me up. Uh, cats in my house tend to lay on the things. You could literally put something in the middle of the floor, and of every spot that they have, that's exactly where they're going to lay. Um, when it comes to arthritis and uh, discs, so if I didn't have four herniated discs and arthritis racking my spine, we put on our coolest clothes and go dancing. And if you do have herniated discs and arthritis and you're not getting results the way that you're currently treating it, please give us a call so we can help you with that so you can get back to dancing or at least putting on your coolest clothes. Uh, if you still have energy after walking up the stairs, your opinion about chronic pain is irrelevant. So if you are dealing with chronic pain and you're having issues with stairs, please give our office a call to see if we can help you to reduce that pain or at least get better control over it so that you can walk upstairs and enjoy your life. You know, you're getting old when one big fart throws out your back. That's always a funny one. Um, sometimes I notice in my office when we do adjusting, uh, things start moving a little bit easier in the intestine. So sometimes we have a uh, side effect of things moving after your appointment. So don't be surprised if you have to go to the bathroom and it feels like you lost a little bit of weight after that. Uh, so my gift to you, so those of you that uh, are here tonight still and uh, watch this video and felt like you got some information from it, my gift to you is a free health consultation. So this month, um, as well as I'm going to be extending this out until mid-July, uh, so until July 15th, you have a free health consultation available. So you deserve great health care and you want a doctor that listens to you and understands what's going on with your body. And number one, uh, do, you, do you not only want a doctor that listens to you, but number two, you want a doctor that can actually explain things to you in terms that you can understand so that you know what your responsibility is and how you can help your body heal. So uh, you can request a free appointment on our website. Uh, again, that's freedompeoria.org until July 15th. So go ahead and log on to our website, freedompeoria.org. So the new patients tab or at the very top, there is a book now button. You can click that and put your information in. We'll get you set up with a free health consultation specifically for your health and how to help you uh, not only get out of pain, but all the other things that we talked about tonight on the board to stop acting your age. So if you don't know about our office, uh, again, it's Freedom Chiropractic and Holistic Health. We're located in the Metro Center in Peoria, Illinois. We are open until six o'clock on Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursday nights. And we're open on Saturdays twice a month as well. So again, our phone number is 309-689-6200. Or you can go on our website, freedompeoria.org. Uh, again, we're located in the Metro Center right next to Peoria Camera Shop and 50s Diner. So again, make sure you go on our website, go ahead and request that appointment before July 15th. After July 15th, that first appointment is going to be about anywhere from $100 to $150. So make sure you take advantage of that free health consultation. 
Thank you so much for stopping in. And just so you know, uh, next Wednesday, I'm really excited because we are going to be starting a new month. It's going to be July. And the whole entire month of July, we are focusing on family. So we want to talk to you a little bit more about how chiropractic care can help you with hormone balance and fertility problems. We're going to talk a little bit more about how chiropractic can help during pregnancy. We're going to talk about how chiropractic can help your kids with health issues, growing pains, you name it. And we're also going to talk a little bit more about what we treat and how we can help kids with specific issues that a lot of times don't really have many solutions in the medical world. So we can help you a little bit more with that. So again, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I really hope that you learned something and uh, hopefully you come back again another time for our next Wellness Wednesday. So have a great rest of your day and thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to Freedom Chiropractic and Holistic Health. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell so we'll let you know about some new videos coming out. Every Wellness Wednesday, we go live at 5.